beautiful dumbest on that. He's arranging uh, that. Father in heaven, we thank you for me, for the many blessings of life up to the present hour. We're thankful for the good people of the generation past and what they contributed to this community and the marks that they left for us. We realize that it was they who founded the educational system which has benefited so many thousands in the past, which we enjoy. We come to this hour of dedication of this pack in the memory of those past who took advantage of the training of our school system and of the people, people of today and tomorrow. May all of our past, present, and future citizens remember with love and pride our accomplishments as they see this memorial. We are thankful unto thee that you made our educational system possible through your love for mankind and for the efforts of our teachers trustees and administrators. May your blessing rest upon our community throughout the days to come and help us remember that all good things are possible through thee. In the name of our Savior we pray. get in here. I don't speak very loud. But I'd just like to remind all of the old timers and the new ones that on this ground stood the most ornate school building in this anywhere around. Certainly nothing in Bell County or surrounding county. The old school building there was just a building out of this world for its time. And it's just a sad thing that it burned not dedicating or putting the plaque on the building itself today. Uh, I had uh, an old, uh, I want to call your attention to the building sketch here. Up on the dome there's a pole that sticks up. And I had an old uncle that lived out right south of town on a farm, but in off seasons he was a pretty good carpenter. And he worked on this old building when it was being constructed. <clears throat> and he used to boast that the wooden ball on top of that post, that he drove a nail in the top of it when they put it up there. And he could boast that he had driven the highest nail that's ever been driven in Bell County. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this old school, how of course, all of you know, housed all of the grades from first through high school, which at that time was 11 grades. It was heated by steam elevator, uh, steam uh, radiators from the boiler room that was in the, the basement in, on the north side of the center of the building. Uh, it's thought at the time that the faulty flue sparks, he got out of that faulty flue and started the fire. It was in the afternoon and <coughs> we uh, were all told to march out and in those days you did march out, you didn't just rush out. <laughs> we marched out and by the time everybody got out of the building, it was pretty well enveloped in sprint and flame. It wasn't but just a little while until word got around over town through certainly not radio, but through party lines and one thing or another about the old school being on fire. And soon the whole area up here was covered with parents rushing up to check on their kiddos to see if everybody was out to say it was a momentous occasion. Uh, there was no indoor plumbing in the building, but the necessary rooms were in two frames.
same building down just below the, the crest of the hill over on the south side. And one building for boys and one for girls. And it, uh, you got your exercise and one to the building and back. It was quite a little walk down. We all, in those days, uh, we had to march in and out of school. And uh, when recess time came, students marched out and they had to stand in a line, and it, that line had to be a straight line, too. And when it was a good straight line, then the teacher would dong a little handheld bell, and everybody could disperse. The same thing when the recess was over. You, they rang a bell, and you lined up to march in. We had a lot of uh, good common organized system, I guess, around the school. Uh, we didn't have uh, too much trouble in school then as we do now in big schools and small schools. There was very little, if any, vandalism that went on. Uh, kids went to school not because it was the law that they had to go. They went to school because it was just something that they had expected to do from childhood on. From little kids on, they knew that Pretty soon they'd be going to school. Nobody had to make them go. Uh, there were a lot of rural elementary or first grade schools all around the country. You had Little Nolan School and, and uh, Hay Branch School, Clear Creek School, uh, Reese's Creek School, and maybe some others, Palo Alto. And, and they taught the first few grades, and then the high school kids came to this. When uh, when I graduated the year that after in 19, the building burned 23, we finished that year uh, going to school in churches. Uh, some of the high school classes in my class went to church, uh, Methodist church to school to finish out that year and the, the beginning of the 24 season. And, then we moved into the new building. I was in the first class to graduate from the building Avenue D School over here. And in that graduating class, there was a total of 33 graduates. People nowadays can't imagine the growth and the enrollment in schools that we've had uh, in those in my lifetime, uh, from 33 to nearly that many hundred. Now, it was uh, good behavior was the, the thing that was expected of you at school. There was uh, three, I guess we'd say three uh, penalties for misbehavior, depending on the severity of it. And they ranged all the way from having to stay in after school to writing humpteen words or phrases on the blackboard. Or in the third case, you were sent to the superintendent and the handling was administered. I don't think they do that now. But I, I graduated with honors. I got all three of those. <laughs> tell you a little personal incident. Uh, one occasion we came out of this the building on, uh, on this end and, and four of us, uh, Gilbert Jackson, L.G. Schaffner, T.J. Slaughter, who was a Baptist preacher's son here, and myself took out running instead of stopping to form the line, we just tore out running. The superintendent's office was up in this window here, and he was looking out the window. We were running down this sidewalk. 
The next morning he came into the classroom. We were in about the seventh, eighth grade, something like that. He came in the next morning and, and told Mrs. Harrell, our teacher, uh, that he wanted to see these boys in his office. And so he called Gilbert Jackson and Gilbert went in and got his paddling. And, and this, T.H. Minor was the superintendent that administered this. And then he told Gilbert to go tell uh, T.J. to come in and so forth. And then when the third one came out, he told him, he said, now you go tell the other one to come on in. And I was that other one. <laughs> <laughs> and when I went in, Mr. Minor said, well, Roy, I didn't know who it was. He said, I knew the other three. I just told him to tell the other one to come on in. <laughs> <laughs> but I got my paddling. Sometimes when you got those paddling in school, your home folks found out about it, at least mine. You'd get another one when you get home. But at any rate, it was a wonderful experience to look back on. Uh, it's just I've been thinking about this and how many people that went to this school that have honored this school and honored the community uh, in their life after they got out of school. We had, uh, for instance, Mr. Ike Cole, who was a very prominent Bell County attorney and the father of old Vita Cole, Bobby. And this old Vita Cole, Bobby also attended school in this burned building. Uh, another important man in the county was D. Red Palmer, who was well known all over the state as an excellent and fine trial lawyer. Uh, D. Red Palmer was elected and served as mayor of Killeen when he was 21 years old. His son, Jim Bonner, practices law in Temple now. Uh, my old uh, classmate, Paul G. Schaffner, was elected state representative for this area for a couple of terms, and then afterwards he became attorney for the general land office until his return. So there's been some very important feet. feet that tread the hallways of the classroom of this old building. Uh, that concludes my remarks, unless I, someone has some questions I might be able to answer. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here and to tell you my side of the old school. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, introduce uh, uh, to stand up here for just a second, Miss Norman. Uh, Ernest, uh, these two, I believe, are the only. Do we have another? Jean and Marguerite Bishop. Jean, oh, excuse me, other attendees, uh, uh, graduates of this school. Would you all come over here and stand for just a minute? Who has graduated from this school? Yes. Okay, well, come on. You are an attendee. <laughs> come on. You, you, okay, but you attended this school before. Come and stand here just a second. We want to get everybody to get a picture of you all. Okay. But you you attended the school. Come on, come on. You don't get out of <laughs> Here you go. There you go. Anybody else who attended this school that I'm overlooking? I almost overlooked. Nobody from the class of twenty two. and then I have a whole bunch of names to read out in a great big hurry, and then we're going to be finished. <laughs> this is not the picture of the school when it burned. Okay. It, we had a, a, a big um, 
porch on it with great columns. All right. And so that doesn't look like that. That's what we had to go on, and I, <laughs> that's the way I it is. I <laughs> it's cast in bronze. So <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Uh, we did have a lot of help with this uh, project, and I just have to acknowledge uh, a few people. First of all, Cable Vision gave us this little five by five plot, and uh, representing uh, Chuck Davis from Cable Vision is Mark Manning. Thank you very much. Uh, JFK has his little acre in England, and we, Kaha has uh, five feet here at, uh, at Cable Vision. All right, uh, I want to thank two uh, veterans organizations, the Ladies Auxiliaries, uh, uh, the Ladies Auxiliary of the American Legion Post uh, 573 and the Ladies Auxiliary of VFW Post 9191 for their financial contributions to this project. Yeah. I want to thank everybody on the Killeen Area Heritage Association Board. All of you people on the board, raise your hand, please. I'm not going to introduce you by name. Get your hands up. Yes, thank you. And uh, you people who have uh, helped so much to get this project approved and, and underway. Uh, Wendy Hallmark was the superintendent on the project. And one of the things they did that you need to know about is that they enclosed under the marker a time capsule. And I don't know all the stuff that he put in it, but it's in there. <laughs> so a hundred years from now, somebody will open it and it'll be whatever he put in. All right. I'd also like to thank all the, the people from the uh, newspaper and from the television stations who have helped us keep this project alive as it has gone along now for a couple and a half years. Um, I'd like to thank Wallace Vernon for keeping us honest with IRS, the KISD for their continuing support of the project, all the members of Killeen Area Heritage Association would be members and all of you who came today. Thank you very, very much for your support. And that's it. We're going to unveil this thing and go home. Oops, can't get it off. <laughs> you went to this school, Mr. Record. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, I went, I went for life. Uh, yes, I, I, I know. <laughs> yeah.